in class 12, we're going to take a look at multiband dynamics processing. Um, and uh, in multiband dynamics processing, we're applying uh, compressor limiter techniques within frequency bands, band limited. Um, and when working in the multiband, there's many really, really cool ways where you can create additional movement in sounds. Um, so most of this type of stuff is used, you know, most effectively or, or quite often in mastering, but also a lot of this is extremely valuable in, when working in music, you know, and working in a mix, um, not just in the mastering realm. So there's loads of ways that you can get into some very cool uh, dynamic processing effects uh, with multiband stuff. Now, what's really key and cool about the multiband stuff is that the multiband um, stuff when you work in different frequency areas starts to work more of the up down characteristic of sound. So all of what we've talked about in terms of compression is mostly front back movement and uh, a compressor will not create any lateral left right movement um, you know because that would have to be built into like dynamic panning and tr you know keying dynamic panning and stuff like that so which is fine you can do those types of things that's that's a different form of dynamics processing that's not really relevant to what we're talking about here. With multiband dynamics though, when you can control the compression attack release characteristics in different frequency areas, there's two things you can do. One, you can completely decimate and destroy a sound <laughs> in the most worst way, right? It's, it's like a tool that if you just misuse it, it can just destroy a mix, just tear it down to shreds, ruin everything that you've ever done with it. And if you really understand how to dynamically work with it, though, you can actually create height, right, up, down, in addition to front, back movement. And that is amazing. So frequencies, low to high, actually image in the speaker, low to high. So the way that you get um, separation and you get size and up, downness in a mix is by allowing the high frequencies to come through accurately so it raises things up in the speakers. And this is how you can take a vocal and raise it up in the speakers and how you can take a bass or a kick drum and make it sink down low in the speakers. It's all about frequency se uh, um, separation. And multiband dynamics are a big part of that, you know, of making that happen. Um, usually what keeps low frequencies up in the speakers is mid-range. So, just a simple technique that I can explain here is like if you were to say pump the low end on a track, you could actually have the overall gain of the low frequencies um, attenuating, but then pumping upward when kick drums or bass notes hit. Um, and at the same time, have the low mid range dip during that same period of time. And what that does is it would take the kick drum and by dipping the low mid frequencies at the same time that you're pushing the low frequencies, it pushes it down in the speaker. Really simple technique. And you could use these things just that simple um, on drum tracks or on your stereo stem track, you know, for the drums to kind of open the sound up. So there's loads and loads of amazing ways here. And we'll get into some uh, sort of band limited parallel compression techniques as well because that's all relevant here. And there's just loads and loads and loads of tools here, specifically with drums, especially the dynamic noise reduction, um, you know, where you can have different frequency areas attenuating, sort of like a gate that opens up in different frequency bands. Um, there's loads and loads and loads of fun stuff and some just really amazing tools that have never existed before in the analog realm because they're just too hard to make that now exist in the digital realm because of very clever people who are good at math. So... Uh, I think uh, this that will give you a basic idea for where we are with uh, class 12. And uh, so uh, let's uh, wrap this one up.